uh, we now switch over to a more performative uh, uh, setting. Uh, uh, we invited the free school uh, initiative of uh, uh, Greta Kerr. Uh, the reason is uh, that I learned one day uh, that Greta Kerr uh, is quite, a, uh, quite an impressive uh, initiative in our uh, context uh, when the uh, head, the director, uh, Apart uh, Schilling was a main figure in the mainstream theater uh, of Hungary and then one day decided to give up uh, this job and instead of that uh, finding new ways of local uh, cooperation. Uh, and as far as I uh, see, uh, Balint, you, uh, you are uh, something like a right hand uh, of this uh, process uh, establishing um, this uh, uh, free school. Uh, as a cultural and education, educational um, developer uh, and you cooperated uh, with uh, Abba Schilling and I'm very glad uh, that you have also uh, three of the students of the uh, free school uh, with you, uh, Nora Schulz, Maria Kosic uh, and uh, Miksa Kaja Arpashi, it's wrong said, sorry about the, the, that, uh, <laughs> but nevertheless glad that you are here and also, uh, maybe uh, 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 make, make it possible uh, to have another format uh, before uh, lunchtime. The floor is you, and we are going to leave. Thank you. Since lunchtime is approaching, I, I just want to uh, drive your attention just for one minute from the center to the periphery of this room. And I, I thought to just to ask you a very simple question, to turn to your neighbor and, and have a discussion with your neighbor, just for one minute. Uh, and the question is that... Uh, yeah, I'll speak here. The que is this good for you? Yeah. Okay, super. So the question is, when, uh, in what sense you feel that the, the place where you come from is in the center, and in what sense you feel it is in the periphery? So please turn to your neighbor and you have one minute and, and share how do you feel about that. In what sense you feel in the center and in what sense you feel on the periphery. So soon come to some kind of end. Okay, so continue the, the last part in the, in the lunch time. You can continue with it. Um, um, I come from a, from a theater, uh, but now we are going to talk about an education program of this theater and the poster campaign, uh, what, the, what this uh, education program resulted. And I really appreciated the idea of Michael that uh, he, he wanted me to, uh, to take along with the, the, the students who were the participants in, in this program. Actually, they are going to tell you more about it. Um, I just understood from, from his request that he was interested in our way how we turned from from a, from a, being a, a, like a classical theater to to do an education program. Um, it's clearly a tendency now. Um, in I can see whenever I go around in European theaters that you try to in, get inspiration from the peripheries or from new areas. Um, and, and maybe it's, it, it can be in, uh, interesting to see an insider's view, how an organization went through this process or how they approached to, to, to look for these kinds of inspirations. So, uh, but to start from the, just shortly from the beginning, Creative Curve was um, uh, a big inspiration for me when I was a teenager. It was a repertoire theater. Uh, this was the first performance which I saw, uh, and this uh, ra uh, raw and naked uh, honesty of the actors in, the, in this Wojciech adaptation really captured my, my fantasy. It was not only me, but uh, those times uh, Kretaka was among the most successful Hungarian theater companies. It won the most prizes and toured the most times abroad. Um, and one of the features of uh, Kretaka was that it didn't have a recognizable style. So all the performances were uh, very different in the forms they used. Uh, however, it was uh, very clear to see that, uh, that each form, what, what the performance used, was somehow obviously very relevant to the topic it, it pictured. 
and one could also see the development from one performance to another. So it was very clear how they could uh, incorporate uh, in the involvement of the organization the, the achievements. Uh, in 2008, Arpad Schilling, the, the founder and the director of the company, decided to change the, the form of the organization itself. And at this point, the, the actors left, and, uh, and Kretaker started to do projects which were designed for specific communities with the, with the request for the, the, the members of these communities to take actively uh, to participate uh, in, in the projects. Um, and these projects mostly addressed uh, directly social issues, and they openly talked about political questions. Um, this is an, an example. It was a series of theater events in two villages of Eastern Hungary, focusing on local problems, um, especially the tension among Roma and non-Roma people living there. Um, and one explanation what Arpad Schilling gave for, uh, for the change of his company was that he, he didn't like the, 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 the division in regular theaters of some people being on stage and some people being in the darkness and, and silence and having the role to upload at the end. So uh, he, he thought it's not a democratic situation and he wanted to uh, offer the power of being on stage for those who do not receive attention as granted. Um, I really appreciated the, the, um, the commitment of uh, constantly challenging uh, themselves, of Schilling and his colleagues. And uh, um, I joined a little after this change, uh, the company. Um, and, um, and, 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 and what this challenge means. Um, for example, this, this, uh, this series of performances which I talked about was, uh, uh, the, the title was it, New Spectator, and it had the aim to, um, to use the creativity of theatre in an environment which was not at all familiar with performing arts to, to open discussion. Um, and when you, when you approach new areas, peripheries, uh, it brings along responsibi responsibilities. For example, how do people who have never seen theater before uh, handle the experience of not just attending a performance, but uh, when this event provokes them to talk about their traumas publicly? Or how does this community uh, carry on when the project is over and, and you just leave the village? Or another example. Uh, how do a bunch of kids from rural areas of Romania uh, integrate in their everyday life of uh, participating in a performance which toured from Wiener Festival to Festival Tokyo? Um, when we designed our free school program, it was uh, very clear that uh, we want to somehow uh, approach the, the peripheries in, in other kind of peripheries and maybe in another manner, but we wanted to keep also some things from the uh, what we had ori originally. Um, and we wanted to carry on to work with students who were interested to, uh, to explore their environment um, and to challenge their creativity with uh, looking for their own answers for real social issues. Um, but it was also true that we didn't want to train future actors. So for this reason, we, we decided that we do not uh, do a program for kids who are participating in a performance, but we rather do a program for its own sake. Um, so the program comes first, and the results can be shown in an artistic way, but, uh, uh, but the form is only a result. As you might have heard, Hungary has uh, developed a lot uh, in the recent years. We have elected our uh, far-right populistic government uh, the last year for the second time with two-third majority. You can see this nice orange color. Uh, this is the, the, when we elected them for the first time in 2010. And this enabled uh, these guys to do a lot of changes in our, uh, in our society. For example, to change our constitution. It's called fundamental law now. And uh, well, they were not enough satisfied with it. So in, within one year, they had five amendments added to it. Um, and clearly, this, these changes affected in a lot of ways the society. Without going into details, I just want to, to point out that it had effect on our organization as well. Um, 
we received less and less subsidy from the state uh, and more and more harassment as NGOs labeled as foreign interest activist groups. So finally we decided to, to refuse to take any kind of subsidy. It also had to, to uh, had some kind of consequences. So for example, this program was financed by the by the German state, by Goethe Institute, and some parts of it by, by Norwegians. Uh, and now it's not an ongoing program, program because we had to, to cut some parts of the organization. Actually, I'm not uh, working now, so we have the plans to, to continue on from the, from the fall of 2015, but it's only a plan now. Um, the, the character of, uh, of, of uh, our education program was highly affected by Kretaker's choice to, to remain critical towards the government and the system during these recent years. Uh, this is a demonstration what we made uh, against the exception of uh, the new constitution or the fundamental law. Uh, and uh, and uh, the, we, we thought that it's very important that uh, when uh, NGOs who are dealing with political questions are labeled as traitors and, uh, um, and, and, uh, and try to ban, and when, for example, in schools uh, dealing with politics uh, or not dealing with politics counts as a value, uh, then it's really crucial to, to, to allow the growing up generations to train their public voices. So I, I will uh, now let them talk. We are young. We are, we are the future, or we form the future. This is often told us by adults, and strictly in the context of future. But what if we want to form the present? We have to think about the future, because now we don't have voice yet, and uh, critical differences are expected from us to achieve in the future, even though in the present, the schooling system which we attend is, uh, is putting us in a frame of traditional values and, uh, and uh, traditional um, roles. For example, I go to a school which is highly privileged, and there is not even one Roma student in it. This is not uh, necessarily a discrimination by the school, but mostly of the schooling system, which uh, disables uh, uh, Roma kids and, uh, and uh, um, less wealthy kids to, uh, to attend uh, uh, privileged schools. And uh, not only uh, um, some parts of the, of the young generation is, um, is put in a role, but youth as a whole is also put in a role by, uh, by ageism. A lot of, oh, uh, so, <clears throat> yeah. It has happened to me a number of times that I had a conversation with somebody and out of the blue, he, asked, he or she asked me the question, and what do you do for a living? And I answer, I study. Oh, cool, what, what, uh, which university you study at? And they say, I'm a high school student. Oh, well, that's cool, they answer. And that they thought that I was older. And I can feel it instantly that their opinion about me and, uh, and what, uh, their, their opinion about what I say is totally re-evaluated by the fact that I'm only a high school student, that I'm only 17 years old. And this, is, uh, this has to do uh, something with the schooling system, I think. In school, there is a strict hierarchy uh, in, uh, between students and, uh, and uh, teachers, which, which is not based on abilities and uh, on experiences, but rather age and status. In, uh, this, uh, in this frame, students are, are made to feel less important and that uh, their opinion is not important uh, that much. So, yeah. Um, and um, this attitude towards students is, uh, is resulting in, uh, in something that we call an, a politic or non political uh, uh, youth. So, 
I, I have a classmate who, with whom I uh, spoke about politics and how to uh, form a political opinion in, uh, in, uh, as, a, as a young people, and I want to present it to you. Try a different one. Well, I'm not into politics at all. I don't think it has to do anything with me, and I think uh, it's okay like that, and uh, I think there's no point in talking about politics because, you know, if things go well, it's great, and we are happy about it, but if things go bad, it sucks, but we can't do anything about it. I mean, the majority rules, so I have no influence on politics at all, then why would I worry about it? But soon you will be voting age. What will you do then? How will you decide who to vote for? I'm going to ask my parents. You know, they raised me, so we are very similar, and I think that they know what is good to do. Yeah, but you can't ask for your parents' opinion for forever. Yeah, that's true, and I think that when I will be mature enough to have an opinion, I am going to find uh, someone to vote for who matches my interests. So, as youth, we think that our opinion is not important, that we shouldn't really uh, express our opinion, that we don't have interests, which is ridiculous because everybody has interests, and. Um, I think this, this is based on uh, the, the lack of, uh, of political uh, education in the education system. We still don't have in Hungary, and I, I think that not in other countries as well, a subject with, uh, uh, which uh, encourages young people to research uh, about politics, to, uh, to find um, find uh, out their opinion and uh, find a way to express their opinion in politics. So, uh, but we have some, some uh, new laws uh, in Hungary also for, uh, for, um, for, for schools. And there, there have been several um, ways to improve uh, the schools, but none of it uh, was was focusing on uh, the the importance of school, which uh, schools have uh, in in raising a, a generation which is active in politics. Uh, there have been reforms of subjects, and there have been uh, there. Mm, there's a law which basically uh, makes every uh, teacher teach from the same teaching material and, um, and uh, forces students to uh, learn the same way, but not about politics. And, um, and uh, schools have uh, so-called student councils, or at least they have the opp uh, opportunity to, do, uh, to make a student council, because right now, Students have no influence in what they study, how they study, and no influence at all about the institutions they study in. So student councils is an option to, to uh, help this situation, but because there is no encouragement uh, to schools, to teachers, to students to, to form these councils, uh, these are really rare. And uh, in schools which have student councils, they don't use it to its full, uh, full potential. For example, my school has a student council, which which uh, which is aim uh, would be to uh, let students uh, raise their voice for uh, things they they think is important, but but it's uh, supervised by teachers and uh, controlled by teachers because uh, every financial decision which the student council makes is is uh, controlled by by the teachers. And also, uh, linking back to, to uh, the politics, schools have, no, uh, have a no uh, politics in school policy, uh, which is, which is no, not uh, written anywhere, but it's a, it's a, a non-formal agreement in schools, that a school is no place for politics, and uh, students shouldn't uh, um, express their political opinion uh, in, in schools. This leads to uh, not uh, forming uh, political opinions also, and, and this banning of uh, schools, uh, uh, banning politics from schools, is actually 
impossible because even though we do not uh, make political statements directly, we make them under indirectly by, by the choices we make, by what we wear or what we say. For example, saying that, oh, that shirt looks so gay. That's a political statement. And I can hear that a lot in schools. So um, being afraid of something and, and banning something as it was uh, dangerous uh, and, and uh, dangerous for students from schools is uh, is not rational because it's part of our daily lives. We uh, make political statements all the time, but but we try to ban it and try to uh, um, try to protect uh, the youth from this, which is which is unnecessary. And uh, one uh, might raise the question that if. Uh, if there is a school which encourage, uh, a schooling system which encourages passive learning and uh, the, and uh, discourages forming an opinion and expressing an opinion, what might that lead to in in the form of a society? For example, how will we participate in democracy? Maybe we will be passive in, in democracy also. So to sum it up, I see youth as a discriminated group in our society. We uh, don't uh, get, get to share our opinion. We are discouraged for, uh, from uh, forming an opinion. We are excluded from uh, the decision-making uh, process which, affect, which uh, um, affect us. And I think this is unacceptable and unsustainable. So uh, I found Critiker. Uh, where I, I found a bunch of uh, other youngsters who think the same way and who share my concerns. And we, uh, we want to take initiative and, and try to uh, improve our situation. And we want to do so by uh, raising awareness and helping another even more discriminated group in our society, homelessness. Before this free school project, I had never thought about uh, homeless people's problem as a thing that might, uh, may affect me. I, will, uh, I never think it's a problem. Now I'm going to present what I learned, let's say learned, uh, this time. In Hungary, if you lose your home and you try to try to live in the street, you break the law. The last recent fundamental law, as Balin said, uh, state that if you live in the street uh, or in an underpass, you are doing an illegal act. So you have to pay a big fine. Uh, in the EU, around 4.1 million people are homeless. <laughs> and in Hungary, around 30,000 people. And most of these people live in Budapest, the capital city. Uh, there are almost half a million empty apartments. Uh, and there are different types of shelter for our homeless people, but there isn't enough place in there. Many people try to live in tents, tents or hoods, build them by self in the woods, but it's also an illegal act. So the only choice for for those people who don't have a home, nor a bed in a shelter, neither a tent to live on the street, but as I mentioned, it, it's an illegal act. So there is an event, the March of the Empty Houses, which points out uh, how many empty houses is there in the city. Uh, last year, the people who attended it sat down in the huge empty hospital. It took only a, a few hours, but got in the media, so it might be helpful. I think these, are, these protests are very important, because this is the only way to show everyone the problem. There are several other laws which discriminate them. Uh, it's forbidden to take away anything f uh, the stuff people throw out as garbage. So nobody uh, 
can take away anything from a public being because if you do it, you could get also a big fine for like everything. Uh, there are also uh, a place where homeless people can't go. A few days ago, uh, the Council of Saint Andre accepted a new regulation. Saint Andre is a town nearby Budapest. It's a very big uh, tourist attraction. The new law is about that the part of the city will be homeless free. So the homeless people couldn't uh, go there, not even for the social institutions. Unfortunately, it's a tendency to ban homeless people from the public places, even in the heart of the capital city. Uh, uh, so it's happened once before. Uh, and last but not least, if homeless people try to get a job, they will have a hard time to find it. Uh, if you don't have a permanent uh, home, you don't get a card which has your uh, address, only a card which has your district or your address uh, of the shelter where you live. You can see it in the picture. I don't know it exists anywhere else except Hungary. So uh, all the em employers need to see this card before they can hire you. So if they see you don't have an address or your address is a shelter, they might not hire you. So it's a circle because if you lose your job, you might lose your home, then you can't find a new one because you don't have an address and you might get a fine because you don't have a bed in a shelter, so you sleep in the street. Uh, next to my school, uh, a month ago, the mayor had built a three meter high bars in the street corner so that uh, homeless people couldn't sleep there. I was shocked when I saw it. A few people did a demonstration about it. They made furniture out of card box and they put it in the cage. There were few speeches and the whole thing got in the media. It's cost more than uh, 3,000 euro to build this cage and this money would be uh, enough to keep up a house by the government for at least eight years. So, uh, I was more than happy when I saw this uh, initiation on Monday morning. Now I hope the monster will be gone soon. Unfortunately, in these events, not many people are participating. Most Hungarians lost their empathy for the homeless people long ago. Um, so in the past uh, half year, uh, Krita Kerr uh, was cooperating with Goethe Institute Budapest to establish a free school home project. Uh, and uh, they wanted to make a program to raise awareness on the major issue, major issue of housing poverty. Um, at the beginning of the program, we tried to discover our own stereotypes uh, with discussions and creative exercises. We also examined the society's stereotypes and uh, we had to face the fact that we are influenced by them and we have to deconstruct them one by one before dealing with the issue. Uh, as we were struggling with our uh, prejudices towards homeless people, we also made a statement uh, about stereotypes on young people. As we often hear that we don't care about politics and we can't contribute anything to the society, but the free school makes a strong political statement that yes, uh, young people can contribute to the society and we have an opinion on social issues. Uh, the leaders of the project also wanted to connect two marginalized groups, young people and homeless people, through social activism, uh, arts and uh, civil politics. Um, we had a goal to achieve in three months. Uh, we knew that we want to make a poster campaign uh, on the streets of uh, Budapest to show uh, the problems with uh, housing poverty. But before that we had a lot of work to do. We had several meetings with uh, experts from uh, sociologists to uh, activists 
uh, dealing with uh, housing poverty, and they helped us understand the different aspects of this problem. But for me, the most important meetings were the ones that we had with homeless people. So um, they told us a lot about their experiences and, uh, and stories that uh, they uh, had with uh, institutions and the state, so how they are discriminated in Hungary. Uh, one of the activists actually invited us to her hut and uh, she told us a lot about her life and uh, how she and the activist group, uh, which is um, formed uh, majorly by homeless people, uh, fight for their own rights every day. Uh, when we got more sensitive and we gained knowledge in the topic, we tried to sketch our first ideas on how we could present the issue in public places. Um, uh, yeah, and as we were talking about our, this is just the first draft that I made for one of the meetings, and um, as we were talking about our ideas, we came to a few conclusions. Uh, we decided that we uh, won't represent homeless people in a way that it encourages stereotypes, and instead of that, we will try to find a way that they can appear as professionals and experts who give information about their oppressed situation. We thought that using the visual language of political posters, or political campaigns, is the right way to present the political messages with our homeless volunteers, and we used ourselves as models for their personal stories. Uh, before printing the posters, we invited homeless people to criticize our ideas, and they also gave us ideas and uh, told us stories of discrimination that we could use afterwards. Yeah, this is one of the posters that I was on. I think it's interesting to compare our first ideas with the final outcome of the project, and uh, uh, because, you know, I think that, or, I wouldn't be proud of some of the ideas that I first had when I, when I uh, get into the project. Um, and what, what's important uh, in our um, poster campaign is that it was a uh, illegal uh, guerrilla campaign. And why we use this um, uh, form is that what we usually see on the streets are advertisements, photoshopped advertisements by big companies who try to sell products for people with bigger income, but marginalized groups, poor people or homeless people, uh, can't really um, influence the design of our public places. For example, uh, there are a lot of renovations uh, of public places in Budapest right now, and a lot of the uh, benches have like spikes, or uh, somehow they prevent homeless people from sleeping on them. So it's not just the lows, but the design of the streets that uh, it makes it impossible uh, to, for everybody to have access uh, to the public places. Uh, yeah, so our group uh, put up uh, 97 posters in Budapest, but uh, they were gone like in two weeks or so, and uh, some of them were damaged by other people, and some of them were uh, uh, removed by uh, like police or something like that. Um, our poster campaign is challenges everyone's ideas about homelessness and housing poverty. And with us middle class students uh, telling homeless people stories as they are their younger self, we tried to make it clear that homelessness is not a result of um, personal life choices or uh, specific habits that people have, but it is a social issue that the whole society has to deal with. And for me, uh, the most shocking and scary thing that I understood throughout the project was that even I could be in a similar situation to those homeless activists or homeless people who I met with, because if I were born into a less lucky family or I wouldn't live in the capital, I might have another perspective for my life. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you just a little video of, about the project.
Thank you very much. Similar uh, way, Marcus Davy in the afternoon will also be, uh, be with uh, us, and uh, uh, Pete Forger uh, from uh, now uh, is also here. He's even thinking about a European uh, project uh, to bring that uh, on the agenda. But let me just say, you were marvelous, and I'm so glad that you as part of our program. Uh, thank you very much.